Welcome to my home studio. I have a computer with an 8-core AMD processor, 32 gig of RAM. Uh, I'm using an X32 mixer, and I'm using an X-Touch with two X-Touch extenders. Okay, let's start off by connecting the X-Touch to the computer. Run the USB cable from the X-Touch to the computer, plug it in. The computer should find the X-Touch and load the drivers that the system needs to run. Let's get started now with setting it up in Sonar. So open up your Sonar Platinum program. When the program opens, rather than opening a project at first, go up to Edit and then click Preferences. Then your audio preferences, your MIDI, all that stuff will show up on the screen. Let's see if we can zoom into this and make it a little easier for you to see. There, there, that ought to work. Okay, so go to the MIDI section. At the top, you'll see all the device drivers and that sort of thing that's in for the X, the X32 isn't going to show up there. Those are audio drivers. So open up your control surfaces. Now this should be blank. You see mine isn't. You're going to click on the Add New Control Surface tab. Then go down to the top box on the Add Control Surfaces where it says ACT. Click on that drop down and go to the bottom of it and click Mackie Control. And then for your input, you want to make sure you have X-Touch And for the output, you want to have X-Touch. That's all you should see in there if it's loaded. Now, if you don't see those, um, let me show you something. If they're there, just click OK and save it. If they're not there, then we need to, to go ahead and go to the devices and, I guess, authorize them. So you go up just a little bit to devices, click that tab, and make sure that X-Touch is checked on the input and on the output. If you didn't see them before as a choice on your control surface, then close this page, go back down to the control surfaces, open it up, and in the box where it shows your Mackie control and it doesn't show anything for input and outputs, click there in the drop down box should now have X-Touch in it. Just make sure that you, you have X-Touch as an input, X-Touch as an output, and everything will work fine. The next step is we have to restart Sonar. So shut it down completely and then restart it. This time when Sonar opens up, open up one of the projects that you've been working on. You'll notice that it takes a little bit longer for that project to open since it's communicating now with the X-Touch. It takes a, a few seconds for it to see everything. Okay, once it opens up, all of the faders in the X-Touch will move to the positions that they are set on the screen and the numbers will show up. Now that you have your main settings done, we need to go in and configure how it's going to control. So if you click on the ACT bar up in the top right hand corner on Sonar and make sure that it is set to Mackie control at the top. Then you'll probably have to close that, open it again and click on the box on the bottom left hand corner. That's going to take you to another dialog box. Uh, this is how your settings are going to operate. Zoom in just a little bit. Yeah, that's a little better. If you look off to the left side, you'll see F1 through F8. Those are the function buttons on your X-Touch. There's a lot of choices for each one, F1 through F8. And you can set it up however you want to, whatever's the most convenient for you. This is the way I run mine. But you need to find something that is more convenient or more suitable for the way you're going to control X-Touch. Directly below that, you'll see your foot switches. If you have foot switches, this is what foot switch A and B will do if you're going to use one for play and stop and then maybe a record switch.
Below that is your master fader. Your master fader is not the one that's at the bottom of your track or at the far right of your console view. The master is the entire output fader. So instead of having master in there, which you would think on your master fader, that's what you would want, you're going to want to click on that and select bus. Because truly, it's not the master fader, it's the bus fader. And then the number one that's to the right of that, if you have a project open, it'll be there. This is for your jog wheel. The jog wheel on the X-Touch controls the timeline on your project. You can see the timeline moves back and forth when I turn the jog wheel on the X-Touch. So what is listed here on this dialog screen is how far that's going to move whether it's going to be in measures, beats, or ticks. If you have it in measures, it moves further each time you click it. Beats is what I have mine set to, and ticks is actually a little shorter, so if you want to get a little finer definition. But if you're going a long ways, it works for measures. Below that is your options. So below the options, the only things you really need to click there are the faders. When you touch them, it selects the track or the channel, and then below, it's going to select any highlighted track. So if you highlight it with your mouse, that'll do it. Below that section, it's going to come out of the box as off. And you'll see a couple choices below it. Make sure that you go to the bottom of that list and click on signal LEDs and meters. That will let your meters that you see on your screen also be displayed on the X-Touch. You won't have to configure anything yet, so just go ahead and hit the X in the corner and close out the box. Now, like I said before, always restart Sonar when you make a change. And sometimes I will go as far as restarting my entire computer, but you should always make sure that you restart Sonar. Now that your system is set up, let's verify the operation. When you open your project, X-Touch should automatically match what your volume faders are on your project. For instance, the scribble strips across the top should be numbered 1 through 8. If you have track names in there, those will show up instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Actually, the number should be underneath it. Look off to the right, you see your time code. And then underneath that is all your function switches for the F1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 that we looked at earlier. And also below that is your jog wheel. The scribble strips will not change color. Even though all of the brochures and literature show colors on the scribble strips, that won't work with sonar. When you touch the slider on the X-Touch, it selects that track. When you move your fader on the X-Touch, it will move the matching fader on Sonar. So everything that you normally would do on Sonar with a mouse, you can now do on your X-Touch. If you look right above the fader on Sonar, you will see that the pan also works from the X-Touch. Above that, you will see you have your mute button, your solo button, and your record arm button. So when you push the mute button, the M will light up. The solo button will light up on the screen also, and top button will arm your track for recording. I hope you found this video helpful and it made this whole process easier for you.